Good morning, YouTube. Um, today is currently, it's the 23rd of June. It's about 8.30 in the morning. I just got off work. I work at a donut shop. So, yeah, lots of fun stuff happening there. Anyway, you're not here for donuts. You're here for Gundams. And uh, today I'm going to start on the loose build and maybe a bit of painting. Can't guarantee that for the head and the body of my Freedom Gundam Master Grade version 2.0, blah, 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 blah. So um, I'm not really going to be too in-depth with this because I don't want to just, you know, four or five hours of video if you're just seeing me sanding. Like I said, I'm not trying to make this a tutorial series, but to show you uh, where, like, how much sanding do I put on my nubs? How much, uh, you know, I, I can't think of a good example. Pretty much, I'm just going to start building, and as things pop up, I'll record them with my camera and, you know, kind of go back and forth, and then as I put the video together, uh, then I'll, that's when I'll decide what makes it and what doesn't. So, I'll try to keep this up to date, but not so full of useless footage that you guys just don't care about. I'll just try to focus on the stuff that, you know, this is how I do this, this is how I do this, and do it all, and blah, 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 blah. I'm rambling. So, without further ado, I'm just going to go ahead and cut to the first part where I'm actually doing something. So, yeah. Enjoy. Alright, so I'm sitting down here in my room. I've got my uh, instructions here. You know, got all, it's all Lego like. And even though some of the stuff's still in Japanese, it's, you know, it's more or less easy to follow. You know, this is E1, uh, that's H, what, H8, whatever, and then so on and so forth. Um, most of these runners, at least for the body of what I'm looking at, is mostly on like the I and J runners, so I got those two right here. There's my I. These are two duplicates of J because they have, uh, you know, parts for the left leg and the right leg and so on. So there's those. Um, do 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 The head. That's going to be super exciting because I always take, like, forever on the head. <laughs> and it's just, it's the first thing people look at. And when people get close, the first thing they want to look at is, like, you know, how'd you do the eyes? How'd you do the faceplate? You know, things like that. Alright, so there's that. Real quick, I'm going to talk about some of the tools I use. Um, this is just any cheap pair of nippers. I actually stole these from my grandmother, so I couldn't tell you how much these cost. But um, you can get these for anywhere from like 7 to 12 bucks. Got a trusty dusty fine-ish file. I can't really tell you what grain this is. Let's see here. Oh, 320, 320. I can't really tell you if that means anything. But just in case, I also have a metal file here. I only use this if I have like a lot I need to chop off and I don't really care for how smooth it is. Um, I was able to get, this was probably one of the best purchases I've had in a really long time. This was about 12 bucks and it was just a large assortment of different, you know, cheap files and each color is a different grade. It's like this brown one here is much, much rougher than say this pink one, which is super smooth. Almost, I'd almost use the pink one if I was buffing something. Um, and then the one I usually use is this blue. This blue is here really, is really nice. It's rough enough to get through most plastics, either it's polystyrene or ABS, without leaving too many artifacts or evidence of sanding. And then I still go over it with some of the finer grains. And for really large surfaces, I, don't, I hardly ever need to use these, but I do have sanding paper that, again, this is just like a little, uh, it was seven bucks at Hobby Town, Hobby Town USA. And it just comes with, you know, a couple different uh, grades or gradients, whatever you want to call it. And they're washable, reusable, all that jazz. And... All right, so one other tool I forgot to mention is a, ouch, is a, um, it's an X-Acto blade. Exacto knife. Um, yeah, this is just any old Exacto. Do be careful uh, because obviously these are sharp, and I actually lost the little slide-on cap for this thing, so I, I need to be very careful. Where I can't just leave this lying around. Um, but this is a brand new blade and everything, and I'll show you why I need this in a minute here. So in the instructions, uh, way over here. Yeah, way up there. You don't need to see it. But it says that the first piece we need here is I9. That's this guy right here. Okay? Now I gotta get my nippers. And I'm gonna show you exactly how I get them out of the sprue or runner. 
I might use those terms interchangeably. So if I say sprue or runner, I'm talking about this thing, the thing that holds all the parts. So you, a, lot, a big mistake is a lot of people like to just cut right up next to the part. Oops. Right there. And that's a lot, like you can do that, and it's definitely a really quick way to just get the part out of the sprue. And, you know, if you know it's not going to be seen or and you can cover it up really easily, by all means, go ahead and do that. But, uh, just for demonstration's sake, that one right there on this side might be visible. And this is, again, a good time to just snip right through those. No problem, because those will probably get covered up. Now, the reason I'm pretty sure these ones right here, you'll, like, you'll be able to see these, it's because you got these two decorative little pistons here. So it's very possible that this lower edge here might just might be very visible. And yeah, I'm gonna try to just cut a little further away from it. One trick I like to do, so you notice on the nip on the little nippers here, you got one side that's kind of flat, and the other side that's kind of got their V shape. So what I like to do is um, I take the flat side and I turn it away from the part. Usually that gives me enough clearance here. To make the to make the, the clip, and you'll sometimes have this little nub on here. Right. So from here, I can kind of get a better look on okay, is this part is this nub going to be seen or is it not? So looking at it, I see that it's super flat right here. So maybe this wasn't quite necessary, and I could probably even just you know tink like that. All right, but you can still see. Let's see if I can get a little bit closer. We'll see a little bit of uh, residue right there. Those are uh, sometimes called sprue scars because, or nub marks or whatever you want to call them. So pretty much, it's evidence that it was once in a in a sprue. Now, what I'd like to take is a little razor here, kind of cut it off, make it as flat as possible. All right, and if I did if I did a decent enough job, you sometimes still might see a bit of white, but it should be perfectly flat. I'm going to go ahead and do these ones here anyway, even though they should be fine. And do be careful. I kind of am a little bit liberal with the razor here. I'm confident on what will and what will not cut my thumb here. But um, <laughs> obviously, if you, this is still a very sharp blade. So you need to be very careful. Alright, so that piece wasn't so bad. I'm going to try to jump to a piece that has a little bit more uh, difficulty and will require maybe even sanding. Alright, so it's literally just like, I kind of like two or three pieces more. But uh, this is something I really want to talk about as far as what makes this a loose build versus just, you know, putting it together. So in the instructions, I got these two pieces here. One, this is the first one, the one I just cut out. I uh, threw in the, cut the pilot there. Again, I'm not going to bother painting him. Uh, and this is the next piece. The only thing that was different is that there's two more pieces right here. They swivel in these little slots right here. Now you can see here on this piece that has the same slots, it's going to go right on top. So I'm not sure if this will be the best example, but I, I might might do this again later on. So you can see we got a couple pegs and holes here, and that's just how things go together, you know? These pieces right here, these joints, just two pegs on either side. And like I said, they fit in those longer slots. Now on this piece here, we got these two pegs there. And then on this one, we have this peg here. And they kind of, you know, oops, make sure that's on there right. They line up, and then you would snap this down, and it wouldn't be able to come off. Now, that's not what we want. We want to be able to take this thing apart, so that if I find out later I need to paint these, then I can do that. So one easy way to make sure that you can take anything apart that you put together is when you initially assemble it, you need to clip some of these pegs. All right. Now usually you can just go at like a 45 degree angle right at the end of there. Let's see if I can get this in camera. Probably not. All right, I'm just gonna gently pinch it there. Let's see if I can focus it. All right, so you see how I got that right there? Just kind of at an angle. It's a little bit steeper than a 45, so I'm gonna back up a little bit. Just gonna take off that end there. All right, so now that peg, it's kind of at an angle. And there's a reason I did it at this angle, too. The reason I do it uh, at this particular angle is because uh, I want the long end 
to be on the outside. If I had an armor piece, which would probably be a better example of this, um, then there might be three or four of these pegs. And if you do them all on the inside, then when you put it back together, it might not sit exactly where it's supposed to be. So I like to make sure that the long end is on the outside. So I'm going to do this for this other one real quick here. Alright, then I'll do it for this one piece here. Now this one, because it's in the front, I'm going to do it on the opposite side. Oh, see now I just messed this up. Because it's a hollow thing. Alright, so no, don't worry. I mean, if you do something like this this early on, it's not the end of the world. It is a peg, yes, but just kind of do your best you can to reshape it. And go ahead and try to make sure it still fits. Alright, so it still fits. Perfect. And these two little pegs here still move, which is what we want. They can slide forward and back, which is, you know, what we want. Uh, I'm seeing, I'm feeling here there's still quite a, there's still pretty loose back here, which is good because then I can just probably pop this out maybe. Well, maybe not. So this front end has come out. All right. So it took a little bit more finagling, and that's probably because I messed this one peg here up. Well, we can see it's still white from being bent, but that's all right. So long it still fits back together, it's fine. And if I didn't do that beforehand, I could have put these together, and I would have had to get my razor out, and I would have had to like, you know, find the slot there, put that in there, risk breaking my razor as I did this, you know, and kind of gently break it open. But yeah, with that, with this, I don't need to do that. I can just kind of, again, still gently. Well, at least at this, I don't have to risk breaking my thing. But you get the point. The idea is to be able to uh, pull it off. And again, if I find a better example of this, I will try to show you. So this here is the first piece I've seen with um, a little bit of detail. And again, if I find a better example of this, I'll, I'll uh, go in. You can see I left the nub mark up here, still there. Uh, there was another one on this piece end right there, but I just clipped that off because I could tell it's just a peg. It's going to go in, in thing. And then um, there's also this little bit right here, and you can definitely see that mark. Now, again, this was purposely, there's still purposely a little bit there. And I'm going to sand it down a little bit. And uh, the reason I'm concerned about this one is that it's very possible this one might not get covered up. So if this isn't perfectly flat, then this little nub mark might show through and you got the paint. This one here, because you can obviously see there's going to be a C joint or something like that up here, this one I just want to make sure that I get as close to uh, round as I can so that it doesn't leave any um, friction there. All right, so you got your fancy little blade here. And like I said before, this I'm aware this is a very sharp blade, and you should probably not do it the way I'm doing it, but if you just carefully kind of slice your way through there, Depending on what model you get, the different models use different kind of plastics. I think this is some, oh, I don't know off the top of my head. It's no, I know it's not ABS plastic, which is really resilient. Um, that's the kind of stuff that Warhammer and other Games Workshop models are made of. It's really hard, but um, it's... It, well, that's just it. It's it's durable, is really it. I won't say that it's easy to work with or anything, but like if you have to, yeah, I'm just kind of sand this off a little bit until I'm happy with it. it doesn't have to be perfect, because again, most of the minor um, imperfections will be covered up in the paint. You can see there. You can still see it, but like I said, that'll be covered up in paint. And what I want mostly here is just a smooth surface so that if there's a pivoting joint up here, that it's not interfering at all. Now this one here is a little bit trickier. I'm going to just do the same thing though. I'm just going to get my little knife and just kind of very carefully go along the surface here. Maybe go in the other direction to kind of see if I can get any points off there. All right. So you can see there, very carefully, maybe, 
right around here. That's a mark I just left from cutting off a little bit too much just because it wasn't at a perfectly flat angle. But again, oops, stuff be rolling around everywhere. Just take your handy dandy file and just kind of make it nice and flat. Now obviously, like I said, you kind of just want to do this until you're happy with it. But, uh, let's see here. One thing to be careful of is the direction you're sanding in, because obviously if you're going in the same direction, then you leave little grains in there. So you want to try and, you know, either do a crisscross pattern, circles work really well, excuse me, um, or just kind of make sure you're changing directions frequently. Now one other thing that you really need to pay attention to, and it, it's very difficult to see on this particular piece, but uh, so right here, you can see that this little triangle here is not the same plane as the one I'm sanding right now. So if I'm not careful, like you can probably see already, I've kind of cut off a little bit corner up there, and that just means that that triangle suddenly is a little bit shorter. This is a very small detail that probably doesn't matter as much as I'm giving it credit for, but just when you have those subtle details, you need to be aware that you might be sanding some of those away if you're not careful. So again, you can see that there's still a little bit of physical evidence there, or at least visually, I guess, visual evidence, excuse me. But when I paint that, and I can just feel it, it's, it's like, it's super smooth, it'll be completely invisible. Alright? So like I said, there was a thing here, but I just clipped that off because I know it's going to get covered up. And I got another one here, and yeah, pretty much uh, onward and outward. Alright, so th this is a... This is a pretty loose piece, to be honest, actually. This is usually something that would go together and then stay together. So luckily I won't have to clip these pegs or anything like that. Alright, so on to the next piece. Alright, so here is, um, <clears throat> excuse me, here's the, uh, the torso. You know, I'm sorry, a little sweaty hand, it's getting hot in here. Uh, yeah, it's just fully assembled. Again, in most of this stuff, I can just, you know, pop right off with a little finagling. Some stuff, like this uh, front grill right here, that's actually, uh, there's very little holding it on in the first place. So if I were to trim anything off, it would just, like, be too loose and constantly fall off. But um, I have to say, I'm actually pleasantly surprised at some of the detail in here. Um, you can see right down there, there's that plate right there. Got some marks there. All that right there, obviously. Back here is surprisingly more panels than I was expecting. Uh, this is all exposed, but I don't imagine it will... Actually, I'm glancing at the instructions right here. I'm missing a few pieces. Huh? It's not done. But I was surprised to see this exposed, so I guess that's because it's not done yet. Um, but like even the, these little tiny cannons here, I need to fix that one's in further than the other. But uh, those those were very small separate pieces and I'm really glad they're separate pieces because that means I, they're easier to paint that way. I could just take them out and paint them whatever color and put them back in. But it also means they're very easy to lose. So I mean, if I can just put the, push this one in a little bit further. Uh, maybe not. Alright, I'll leave it for now. But uh, when I paint it, I'm going to make sure those are nice in there and firm and everything. There's a little bit of that action where the arm can really move forward there. Now that these pieces are on, you can see that that backwards articulation isn't as grandiose as it was earlier. But that, uh, that, that's a pretty good app crunch for, for most master grades. Um, here's a little cockpit thing. It flings over, forward and open like that. You can see the pilot in there. I'm actually really surprised. Like, yeah, you can see the pilot in there, but you can't see his head, like, at all. Like, you really gotta glance in there. And there's a lot of like extra detail underneath here. There you go. That glare actually helped me out there. Uh, obviously, I don't think I'll do too much with that. Maybe I mean I might just do red and then leave it because I don't ever plan to have this like open or anything like that. I'm just gonna bloop. Yeah. So this is step one, the loose build. And again, I can just kind of loosely tug at some of these parts, and they come right off. You know. Nothing's been committed to where it's where it is right now, which is great, and that's the plan. So, 
If I were to paint this next, I would obviously take all the color pieces off, and I have probably just the, uh, the dark gray underneath. And looking at it, there's actually not as many places as I thought there would be that are um, out in the open. So I would take those out, and, you know, and I'd probably do a very light coat of that uh, gunship gray on there. I don't want to make anything too firm. I probably won't even do individual pieces. I'll probably leave most of these joints on here just so that I know that they're, uh, they're on there, but they're not... Uh, they don't have so much on there I can't put it back together and it's too firm you know and then and then you start using too much force to pose your things and, and then you break something because it wouldn't do the thing that you wanted it to all right so we're back um, I think I think I am gonna paint this because I actually have to go run some errands and that'll take me like an hour or two so I figured I'd paint this go put it up on my little styrofoam block and everything uh, get some of these other parts you know their first coat then go do that and come back so yeah here's all the the frame without any of the armor pieces again um so earlier uh, when i said i was missing a piece it's this piece right here and it goes on the back now by default the you know it's the same gray or whatever but uh you remember i was saying sometimes there's holes in the armor yep this is it so uh when i was when I was just test fitting this on here, and it's a pretty tight fit, so I can't really put it on... Wait, well... Kind of. Okay, so you can see how, um... You can see how there's a lot of gray in there. And because this is such a dark blue, I figured this would probably be a really good opportunity to use the intermediate uh, blue that I have, the U.S. Navy, whatever that is. Um, because so little of it is actually seen. And it'll be on the back here. It'll help break up all the gun metal that you'll see. Oops. Wow. Yep, that just happened. So it'll help break up all of the uh, um, gunship gray that you'll see all over here. Um, this other part isn't necessary like at all, but sometimes what I like to do is to make sure I lay the pieces out in a way that I not only can remember where they go, but it also keeps my left and right pieces, like these chest pieces here, separate. I know this one goes over here, this one goes over here, and then these two are on the shoulder. This one actually goes underneath those two right there. That's my, you know, the neck part and everything that goes in the back. So I got quite a few pieces here that all need paint. I got these cheap little alligator clips. Um, they're red from the last model I was working on. But um, you can get these uh, about three bucks for a pair. I have, I think, six of them. And then I got, like, it's literally, literally a chopstick from Panda Express. Just pop that in there. Um, and then you stick them in a block of styrofoam from, you know, a recent, you know, maybe you bought a TV recently or a laptop, Xbox, whatever. Just stick it in that. And then it sits there and, uh, you know, it'll dry. So, yep, I'll... Um, I guess I'm going to come back to you when this is more or less mostly painted and then we'll try putting it back together. Um, one tip that a lot of people like to do, I usually don't find it necessary. Again, I, I won't say that I'm a lazy person, but it, I mean, if there's, if there's corners that I can cut sometimes, then I, then I guess I will. But um, some people that are really picky about how they want their paint to go on, especially if they're airbrushing, is they'll take a... Um, cotton swab or a really really um, a really soft napkin or something and they'll uh, they get some isopropyl al alcohol on there you know 70 percent 90 percent I've seen and they'll wipe it down and everything again usually if your uh, if your hands aren't super sweaty like mine are right now then you should be fine in my opinion but uh, I mean like I mean my hands literally like sweating sweating and I think everything is going to be fine so yeah I'll just give this a uh, thin coat I mean most of what I need it for is like right in here these are the parts that you're going to see uh maybe a little bit back here I don't think so but yeah, I'll go ahead and do that on and make sure this is all there this two these two things right here definitely will be seen so I need to make sure to get those um I don't know I don't think I'm going to bother taking the pilot out I mean no one's going to see him at all, literally. I definitely need to get around this neck piece here. So yeah, and like I said, I'm gonna go paint this. Uh, I'm gonna go set it up, 
And then I will go do my errands, come back and paint the rest of it, and we'll put it together when it's all nice and painted. And I'm back. It's been about uh, three, three and a half hours. It's currently 2 p.m. Um, I went to the, get my hair cut, I went to the bank, stopped at Hobby Town for some extra paints, and uh, yeah, I was able to paint everything before I left. So, this one probably doesn't look any different to you. You're probably thinking, wow, that's such a great matte coat, Weston. Well, guess what? It actually is. I mean, it, it might not seem like that much on camera, but trust me, the it's much flatter and less texture. So, just take my, take my word for it. Alright. Um, what else was there? Oh, yes. So... Uh, do, do, do. You're probably thinking, wait a minute, Weston, you said you were going to do all matte coat. Why is this one shiny? Oops. Why is it shiny? Why is it all glossy? Well, that's because um, this is the blue I was going to use, and unfortunately it only came in this gloss color. But that's okay, because I'm going to put that, uh, that matte coat of lacquer on top of it at the end. So it doesn't really matter if it's shiny now, because it's not going to be shiny by the time I'm done with it. Um, this is the blue. I did decide to just go ahead and do the blue. And the reason for that was because even though it's not quite as dark as I want to be, the the black, let me see here, the blackish blue underneath it will make it show up darker than it actually goes on. So you can kind of see the difference there. So it's still a little bit lighter than what's actually the plastic is, but it's still really, really close. And I don't think anyone's really going to notice unless they hold it right up next to it. Um, got my red, I got all my light grays, I got my dark grays. And I think right now, the only thing I have left to do for the chest at least is to reassemble. Um, this probably won't be the last time I have to... Uh, this probably won't be the last time I reassemble it. I might have to take apart again to do some of the panel lines because some of them are, are really, really intricate like in this back place piece right here it's difficult to see but there's extra lines down in there that are let's see here yeah you see them there's extra lines in there that I gotta figure out how I'm gonna do um, there are a couple different ways I can do panel lines uh, I think I am gonna go oh, dang it go with one of the easier methods and that is a, a wash and I'll show you how to do that later but uh, for now, let's just go ahead and put her back together and see what she looks like. Alright, so here's the uh, completed torso. Uh, as you can see, it's really... That uh, gloss is actually... <clears throat> excuse me. Having a hard time clearing my throat today. That gloss actually looks really, really nice. And it's uh, starting to make me consider just keeping it versus doing the matte coat. But I think I am going to still do the matte coat just because I want to try that really, really badly. Aside from that, from panel lines, uh, let's see here, I mean, you could use decals, and then after that, um, if I was doing post shading or any kind of shading at all, this would also be the time that I would do that, and then the, the matte top coat, and that'd be it. So there's, I mean, since I'm not doing uh, the shading, well, it's still a little thundery outside, um, since so I'm not doing the shading, and I'm not doing any other weathering or anything like that. Just the panel lines and the decals, and then it'll be ready for its top coat. And you can say goodbye to all this shine. And you can kind of see here, because I only waited like three hours, I probably should have waited a little bit longer. Uh, the enamel paint is still a little tacky in some spots. So much so that I actually left quite a few fingerprints on this thing when I was putting it back together. But uh, when it comes to the top coat, it's not going to be noticeable. I mean... If I really had to, I can just wipe it down with some alcohol or even water. Should might be able to do it. But yeah, um, I don't think I'm going to get to the head today, unfortunately. Like I said, it started to rain, um, and I can't, which means I can't spray paint anymore. It's getting a little late in the evening because uh, I have to work in the morning at like two because yay donut shop. So I don't think I'll get to the head like I was hoping. But uh, as far as painting goes. The torso is more or less done. It just need, like I said, just needs panel lines, decals, matte top coat, bam, and that'll be done. All right, so 
we got some stuff today. Um, I got my hair cut. Yay. Um, couldn't get the head finished, unfortunately. Um, it's just, I, I ran out of time, basically. I mean, it's still raining out. It's kind of coming and going, but it's Colorado. So we did finish the building and initial painting of the torso. So that's a pretty good start, if you ask me. Again, it just needs decals, panel lines, and a matte coat, and we're good. So, episode one, a little, not as much as I'd like to get done, but we're making some good progress. Thanks for watching, and if you want to keep watching, I'm trying to get a playlist going for this thing, and uh, as I keep going, we'll just, eventually it'll get done, one way or another. And if I end up having to take, you know, a break for a minute real quick or whatever, then that's just what happens. Like I said, I'm not really going on any set schedule for this, just working on it when I can, getting as much done as I can, and going from there. Thanks for watching. Thumbs up, like, I don't care. Subscribe. I'm not doing this for money. So let me know what you think. Uh, thank you, and see you next time.